Hello. How's it going, guys? Can you hear those birds? They're there. Tweet, tweet. How's it going, guys? Ah, uh, ow. The coffee's really hot. I literally just made it, and that kind of burned my tongue. Sip me, Pappy. Thanks for the 20 bucks. I am to Badger. There's a few that I missed earlier, too. Maybe I'll pull them up. I'll do that right now. Let me figure it out. People asking about the music. The thing with the music is... Uh, I have a bunch of preset playlists that I use. Let's see if I can pull them up here. I have, like... So, so whenever I stream on Game Boomers, I'll have like a pre-countdown and I use the same playlist and I have a different playlist based on what game I'm playing. So when I'm playing a Sonic game on the stream, I will uh, play that playlist that you just heard. It's a bunch of, it's a bunch of Sonic uh, Sonic remixes. And whenever I have, like, I, have like, I have like a Mario one, a Zelda one, I have like um, just a bunch of them. And then, then I have a bunch of albums that I like. And it's usually like chiptune music or, or like glitch hop or something. Let me see what I got here. Hold on. I'm looking for the super chat list. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'll, I'll go through all of them before we start. Today was a weird day for attention seekers. huh? The, the, okay, we're, we should probably talk about it a little bit. There was that little bit of a fight. I'm not looking at the chat right now, guys. I'm sorry. There was that little bit of a fight earlier um, between Guy Moore and myself. And Guy Moore has been watching for a very long time. And he like he's usually like a very chill guy. I don't know why he decided to blow up this time. Like, I have no, I have no idea why. Like, I don't get it. Look at all those super, holy shit, guys. Okay, I'll, I'll get through them all. Give me a second. Thank you very much, everyone. But anyway, like, is, is he even still, he is Guy Moore even still here? Yeah, he's, I guess, you mean, he still autofills. But anyway, like, he's, he's, um, he's always been like a, like a chill dude, and he just decided to go off on me today, and I have, I have no idea why. And I mean, like, it, it was over my weight, and, like, obviously I'm fat. Like, no, no one's going to deny this, right? Like, obviously I'm fat. If, you, if you've ever watched, if you've ever watched um, Game Boomers, you know. You know that I'm fat. <laughs> and I've always wanted to, um, I've always wanted to, to basically lose weight, and it's always been a struggle for me. I have no idea why, though, you know? Like... I have no idea why it's been a struggle for me, guys. Like, really. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what could possibly be that I'm doing. I don't get it. Like, how could I, how could I possibly make the situation better? I'm doing everything I can. I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. Anyway. Any case. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to do it. <laughs> yeah. I've been wanting to go carnivore. Yeah. However, the thing is, like, unironically, I'm quite fat. I am. I'm not the fattest I've ever been, but I'm quite fat. Bacon strips and bacon strips. I'm quite fat, but also I'm I am at this point also the most muscular I've ever been because I've been doing a lot of lifting weight. So I'm I'm like strong fat at this point. My uh, my lifts have been have been consistently going up over the past years. I've been lifting weight like not I've been lifting like I've been lifting weight on and off. Semi consistently, but like pretty consistently, I'd say like seventy five percent consistently lifting weight on and off um, for the past five years, and it's been a very slow build. You, you could probably get to my level of of strength in like two years if you actually did it properly, but still, it's it's not nothing. So I'm I'm definitely muscular and fat. <laughs> yeah, Mizra. <laughs> 
but I still do want to lose weight. Obviously, I, I want I want to I want to lose the fat. Like, I'm I'm bouncer fat, kinda. Yeah, kinda. Yeah. Anyway, it, it, like, I I don't like getting into fights with people, but at the same time, I'm not gonna let someone just like either either steamroll me. Or or steamroll other people who who like me. It's like, why do you guys like him? Like he's like, I, like why are you simping for him in, in his chat room on his channel? It's like, well, maybe because um, my being fat is not the issue at the moment. And I feel bad. I feel bad because uh, Guy Moore has been around for for five years, and he might he might be gone now. Who knows? Right? He might be gone now. I feel bad. But at the same time, I'm not I'm not going to be pushed around on my own channel. Anyway, I'm not sorry what if you're listening, Guy Moore. I'm not sorry what I said to you, but I am sorry that it came to a fight. So how about that? And I'm and I'm sure we could probably agree to just drop it. And no, I do not eat. I I don't eat on the level of Movie Bob. Like holy fuck, even for me, even for me, dude. But anyway, let's continue with these with these super chats here. Jinrai for ten dollars. Thank you very much. Pre-stream drama motivated me to donate. I'm here for SFO's mind, not his body. Keep making that effort to be healthier, and it's all good. I'm gonna try to like redouble my efforts because I like what's a good way to put it. I'm always like just on the cusp of success. <laughs> I have like five things that that are serious that I want to do, and whenever I can get four of them working properly, one of them falls apart. And, and right now it's definitely my health. I, I just need to basically, I don't know, manage my time better or something. Uh, Naomi's not, not actually here, guys. Sorry. The, the, the title was a joke based off of um, a manga that I'm enjoying. And no, I do not, I do not marinate and boil my chicken in Mountain Dew. Naomi's at work right now. She's at work for like the next couple of hours. Um, anyway, I'm going to continue the super chats before we start. Sorry. But I will continue to make an effort. I'm not here for his mind or his body. I'm here for the sip. <laughs> Thanks, Yiz. You are beautiful no matter what they say. Thanks, N.A. Thanks for the super chats. Um, there's the 20 bucks from to Badger. Sip me, Pappy. Thank you very much for the 20. Two bucks from Smoking Lounge. For the coffee fun, keep it up, man. Love ya. I did get off decaf, by the way, guys. I did 100% get off decaf. Uh, that it's gone. Holy shit! Okay, like I I was drinking decaf for a week, and I would get sick like every night. Like, who who what? Why? Who the fuck does this? Like who drinks this shit? There's 20 from Hubble Frodo. Thank you very much. Uh, Granny got real sick and had to take her for a COVID test on Friday. She's been pretty miserable. Hope it comes out negative. She's got health problems that make this thing lethal. Have a good d day, bud. Stay blessed. Take care of your granny, Hobo Frodo. Thank you very much. There's 50 from Badger. Thank you, dude. Last free day off and no bills to pay. Let's celebrate with some cozy sip, warm coffee, and Kenshi suffering. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. I know there's been a few more supers, so I'll refresh it right now before we get going. Let's see what we got here. Let's see. Five from Enmori. Don't sip, don't sip so, don't sip so close to me. That's pretty good. I'll use that for next week's. Hold on, I'm going to copy that and put it somewhere. I don't want to lose it. It's a good idea. There we go. Put it right there. Okay. Drew for $10. Thank you. What's your favorite dinosaur? I actually don't have one. Um, I never liked dinosaurs as a kid or anything. That was not That was not my thing. Naomi loves dinosaurs. Like, absolutely loves them, dude. But I think her favorite is, unironically, like, the fake one from Jurassic World, the Indominus Rex. Five dollars from Grum Truck. There's a petition on Change.org against Trudeau's gun ban for any Canadians who are interested. Um, I will have to do a video on, on Trudeau's gun ban. I will definitely have to. Uber bus dubs, $5. Would you play Doom 2016 or Doom Eternal on Game Boomers? The answer to that is unequivocally yes. And in fact, we've already played Doom 2016 on it. So that's in the stream backlog channel. Um, but I would actually play Eternal for sure. 
Synthonium, $5. Thanks for the advice last week. Paid off my student loans 100% and celebrated appropriately. Also, he's mad at you because you made fun of the fat line. <laughs> really? Come on, dude. <laughs> William Icebane, the thing about keto is that while we're currently doing the lockdown uh, a food prep thing, I can't really do keto because I've, I've frozen a lot of healthy, healthy calorie dense foods that, that, that have carbs in them basically. So I'm talking like, I'm talking like fish and brown rice, you know, or like, um, or like beef and bean chili, you know? That's, that's that's it still has some carbs in it but it's still pretty healthy all things considered because there's like vegetables and stuff in it um so I, I can't i can't i can't try keto at the moment and i can't do like carnivore at the moment either even though i even though i want to try them i basically until until the world returns to normal regarding um regarding food prep i'm gonna just try to do i'm, I'm just gonna try to lower my intake basically simple as that Two dollars from Brick Muppet. This space intentionally left blank. Thanks, dude. Single player car off of five. So up every Saturday to come in and say my greetings. I want to do my own thing. I just want to say you're in that N-word pass, my Kanakistan dude. Every Saturday. Today's, today's Sunday. But thank you. I don't. I don't. I don't, know, I don't know what you're referring to. But thank you. Yeah, it's hard to go. It's hard to go low carb on 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 lockdown. So I'm sticking to like whole wheat pasta and and and, and I'm sticking to brown rice stuff like that. Dev is a lean fitness coach compared to Movie Bob. Well, everyone is compared to Movie Bob. Thanks, yes. 20 from Neil Morgan. Thank you. Check out Peter Zihan. He's a geopolitical analysis. He's been predicting the collapse of the global trade order for the last decade. His predictions uh, have been spot on. Okay, dude, I'll check it out. If I remember. But yeah, like... And then also $2 from yes. If you don't like, you don't like dinosaurs, 0 to 10, unsubscribe. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Since I don't forget, I will check that out right now before we move on. Peter Zihan. Let's see. Disunited Nations is the name of the book. The Scramble for Power in an Ungoverned World. I mean, to be fair, yeah, he he's reacting. It's, it seems like just from based on on the um, the back of the book, he's reacting to Trump's um, isolationism. It's true. Like, I do think that Trump's isolationism is is going to be a bad thing long term because it it will mean that if if America's stepping down, China's stepping up, and that's no good for anyone. It's no good for anyone, dude. Let me try to. Hey, callback! Thanks for the two bucks. Reliable sources and for me that sipping is going on. Yes, it is. I actually didn't like monster trucks either. Honestly, the thing that I was interested in the most as a kid was video games. I was like three years old playing the original Nintendo. Keep a journal and try a 16 by 8 fast working for me. Yeah, Gerardo, um, I've been intending to do that for like the past four months. I just haven't fucking done it because I keep forgetting that I'm doing it. I'll do it. For, like, I, I like 16 by 8 fasts. I really do. I like the idea that I just like eat from like 9 to 5 or something or like from 10 to whatever. Um, and then just like put put it put, right down my calories. I used to when I got thin before I was like 180 pounds at one point. I was like quite thin for. For, for my height and my muscle mass, um, I, I was doing a sixteen by eight, and I was I was writing down all the calories that I ate, and it worked it worked really well. Start reciting Duke Nukem quotes, then he'll want to lift. Thanks, Step Bro Chungus. I basically just need to do it again, frankly. C just said, just started watching your stuff, and I'm loving it. I'm have finals tomorrow, but you're far more interesting, dude. Working to finals, man. Go study. Devonar, thanks for the 50 kroner. Sorry, dude. It'll be up online, though. Um, Actually, I never finished Mega Man 2. I couldn't get past the Wily stages.
but in any case, um, thank you, Can Country. I played that. I, I I do like intermittent fasting. I just need to do it again. I just need to fucking get back on the on the wagon for it. I like MST three K. That's a, that's really fun. Mega Man X was my first game. I used to speedrun Mega Man X when I was a kid. I have I have like VHS tapes of my Mega Man X speedruns from way back in the day. It's awesome. I would speedrun X, X2, and X3. I think the one I was best at is X3. Check out check out what Joe Rogan said about the carnivore diet. My change of mind. Astounding diarrhea for the first two weeks. Yeah, Mark. <laughs> I remember re- I remember watching him talk about it. But apparently, it worked for him. Like it made him feel a lot better. Thanks, Gregor. What's better, laxative or decaf? Um, H250V, I tried. We did Mega Man X, X2, and X3 on Game Boomers. Um, and I tried to do it. I could I couldn't do the route anymore. I didn't know how to do it. Oh, I see single. Thank you very much for the five. I understand. Thank you very much. And thanks again, and, and thank you, Brick Muppet, for the five. And yes. So <laughs> Stop with the super chats already. Yeah, I saw the murder hornet shit. We're all fucked, apparently. Um, okay, thanks for the five, uh, punk ducky. If I don't have misophonia, a neurological problem, certain sounds. Oh, yeah, I think Dom has something similar to that, actually. Dave's girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. H250V, go watch it on uh, on the Backlog channel, man. There's a playlist. Coffee enemas, fuck off. Get the fuck out of here. Oh yeah, Joey. Um, Joey, we have again. Again, I'll just I'll just keep repeating myself, I guess. <laughs> um, Backlog channel has Shenmue one and two on there as well. Yeah, I'll just I'll plop it in the in the chat. Every stream we've ever done is at youtube.com slash gameboomer and I stream most nights at twitch.tv slash gameboomers that's, that's where it happens man that's where it happens um, and actually I, you should probably start at this point Jesus Christ meet the galaxy yeah good night good night guys single player Carl thanks for being here man me the galaxy 10 bucks this is my last money if you why do i die of starvation listen i have enough fat to last for a while if you need your money fucking keep it okay guys um the youtube channel is the is the backlog channel guys it's where uh it's where i upload the streams the next day anyway let us let us let's continue here i'll i'll click on this thingy here boop how to support the channel? Five dollar club entry. Five dollars from a recurring source. That'd be subscribe star, Patreon, YouTube memberships, or the sub button over at Game Boomers. That's a recurring source, meaning that the the bot in Discord will automatically add you to the five dollar club. Um, if you donate to my PayPal, one hundred dollars. That means you get into the five dollar club for life. That's what's going on there. Um, rather much rather watch Game Boomers on YouTube. The thing is. Um, I make a significant amount of money on Twitch right now, and I can't afford to switch over because those, uh, th- there's lots of people who have Amazon Prime but can't afford to actually pay me money. They'll give me the, the, the free, the free Twitch Prime $5. So I, I got it. I got to do it on Twitch, but you know what? I kind of like Twitch's ecosystem. I mean, like Twitch as a company is fucking terrible, but I enjoy that we have like a little growing channel there. It's, it's nice, you know? Yeah, I fucked that up last night, me and the galaxy, I know. And tonight, guys, on Game Boomers, over on Twitch, I'm gonna be playing more Star Wars. I dress up I dress up as fat Luke, and then and Dave dresses up as like a, a heroin addled Han Solo, 
and Naomi dresses up as Princess Leia, uh, incomplete with nipples poking through the front, because Jesus Christ. Let's get to the articles, eh? Let's get to the articles. I can't split stream it, Ironcaster, because if 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 I do and Twitch finds out, they'll just take all my money. <laughs> Hobo, yeah, I do have that, yeah. Yeah, I'm partnered with Twitch, yes. Um, making a cha chicken channel that posts the VODs. Yeah, that's that's youtube.com slash gameboomer. All the VODs go up there the next day. $10 from Montreal. Thank you very much, Namazed. It's like, we're opening up. Government want, doesn't want to lose face with her. We're ignoring the quarantine. Good. Heroin solo sense. That's amazing, pretty much. You watch for Naomi's feet. <laughs> nipples i do say those of you who were uh those of you who were who were there for the first session of star wars talk about naomi's nipples a little bit um anyway let's let's do the uh the let's let's get back to this okay so let's get back to the uh the, the main event here it is here's today's article that i've rustled up for you uh, Lana, I think I have, like, an okay personality. It's not great, but, yeah. But, yeah, no pretty girls, no pro gamers, and I'm just a goofball. So maybe, maybe that'll be enough for some comedy or something. Okay. <clears throat> I am extremely attracted to my brother-in-law, and now we're in lockdown together. My family is house-sharing with my husband's brother during the pandemic. I'm worried our mutual attraction could go too far. Well... You're not a mindless animal here, lady. You could always choose not to do things that would ruin your entire family life. Because of the coronavirus, I'm staying in my late mother's home with my husband, his brother and wife, and our young children. This seemed like a good idea. So we could share chores and childcare, but the situation has become uncomfortable for me because I'm extremely attracted to my brother-in-law. I had hoped this feeling would die down, but it has gotten worse over the past three weeks. I have become aware that it seems to be lusting after me. My husband and I rarely have sex owing to his lack of interest, which set in after our second child was born. So I'm frustrated and afraid that something is going to happen, or that the others in the house will pick up on the vibe between us. How can I stop this feeling? You, you are a moral agent. <laughs> don't do the things that you don't want. Oh, my God. Yeah, blood, brother-in-law isn't blood, blood related. Dude, just have both brothers. Um, 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 what, is it, what is it called? Do something sexual. It doesn't, I don't care. There's, there's a billion things you can do with penises. $5 from King Canuck. Thank you. That's the first half hour of the sip. Has the unlocking happened? The unlocking didn't happen because I had to... Okay, okay listen. I want to do it last night, and Naomi is like, no, you're going to bed. And I was like, why am I going to bed tonight? And she goes, because I have to wake up at 4 a.m. the next day, <laughs> and I'm not having you stay up making noise playing Minecraft. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'll do it, though. I'll make a priority of it tonight, okay? <sighs> anyway, here's the answer. Under normal circumstances, erotic tension is increased when there's an obstacle to acting on it. But now you have an extra challenge because courting danger in non-virus-related ways is a common behavior during this time. Like many others, you may be unconsciously drawn to a peril that you can control. Recognize this and set firm boundaries. Do your best never to be alone in a room with your brother-in-law. Stop fantasizing about him. Increase your bonds with his wife and children. Work to... Actually, <laughs> this sounds like a recipe for disaster. This sounds like a foursome in the making. Jesus Christ. Work to improve your relationship with your husband and try to reawaken your sex life. Focus on your children, on establishing routine, exercising, calming your mind, keeping your family safe. I mean, this is sound advice, but this person sounds a little bit nuts. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Oh boy, we're going back to Jesse Smollett. I mean, no one's talking about it anymore because it happened like a year or two ago, but, uh, Apparently, Jesse Smollett and, and his attacker visited an upscale Chicago bathhouse together. <laughs> Oops. 
visit to an upscale Chicago gay bathhouse may prove that embattled Empire star Jesse Smollett was more than friends with his, with his alleged attacker. <laughs> so, I guess it wasn't about homo... Well, maybe it still was about homophobia. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, can you not have sex with everything for five seconds? <laughs> exactly. They used to party together, and he had a sexual relationship with him. They went to this affluent Chicago bathhouse multiple times, and they had to show ID. It's known as a bathhouse where a lot of affluent black gay men hang out. There should be record of their visits. Okay. And apparently the bathhouse records are going to be subpoenaed in Smollett's upcoming trial on charges of disorderly conduct. The two people who assaulted him are denied they're gay and they sued Smollett's Hollywood lawyers um, last year for defamation after they insinuated there was a sexual relationship between Smollett and one of their brothers. Well, if you're going to a gay bathhouse together, guys, I have a feeling something might be going on there. Thank you very much, JR. I hope I do hit 100k soon. Long shanks for five. Thank you very much, dude. Dev off topic, but decaf screws you up because you are a caffeine fiend, blue balling your espresso addled brain. Wean yourself off with tea or soda, bucko. I only have like one or two cups a day, man. I don't actually have that much. But Na okay, Naomi is like a coffee puritan. All right. Naomi is like, okay, you can, oh, you can't have coffee afternoon and you can't like after, not in the afternoon, like afternoon. Sometimes she even says after 10 and she's like, you can't have more than one cup, one cup a day. And I'm like, God damn it. Leave me alone. All right. Let us continue. AIDS. Nobody has AIDS. <laughs> Thanks for the $2 and a. Teenage girls who stabbed and shaved neighbor they wrongly suspected was a rapist avoid jail time. <sighs> Two girls... Wait, wait, hold on. A pair of teenagers have been sus given suspended sentences over a bizarre attack on their neighbor after they smoked ice. Two girls who incorrectly accused a man of being a rapist and beat, stabbed, and shaved him have avoided more time in custody after they were sentenced in the Supreme Court. The girls were 15 and 17 at the time of the attack. The court heard that they had been smoking ice when, for an unknown reason, they concluded that the man who lived in a nearby unit was a rapist and decided to act. The pair went to his home and forced him to sit with his hands on a table before one of them hit the table in the middle with a small axe. Je Jesus Christ, dude. The man's hands were then tied behind his back and one of the girls stabbed him with a needle. When the man tried to run away, the pair caught him and took him to the bathroom of another unit. He was punched and kicked and made it to take a shower before the girls shaved him and, and, and cut his hair. I do have the horn right here. It's right here. There it is. In his judgment, Justice Michael Alkeem noted that one of the girls recorded the events in the bathroom. The recording reveals that one of the girls told him she was going to stab him. She put a pair of scissors to his throat and continued to punch and kick him. Holy fuck. There's no evidence the man was responsible for any sexual assault. I have no doubt that the man was terrified throughout his ordeal and will suffer the psychological consequences for some time. His fear is evident in the short mobile recording I was shown. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, if this was like two teenage boys doing this to to a woman, it would be it would be fucking wild. They it would be like a high profile event and they they be they had their lives destroyed. Ice is what meth is called in Arizona. Yeah. Both girls pleaded guilty to unlawfully confining the man. The younger teenager has already spent several months in custody. The court heard she suffered serious mental health problems. The older girl's pregnant. Oh, Jesus. Um, the justice imposed a nine-month sentence on each, but both were sentences were suspended. The overwhelming reasons behind my approach are that these two young people must be given every opportunity to put their lives in order, to leave crime behind, and to live in a society as decent and, and to live in society as decent and contributing members. The younger girl must be given the chance to have her mental health problems addressed and treated. 
and the young, the old woman must be placed into a situation where her child can can be uh, provided for. Both will serve twelve months good behavior orders. Yeah, I don't know, man. It feels, it feels like they got, they they got a lighter sentence than than say young boys might. But at the same time, um, I actually half agree with the lighter sentence. I just wish that men would also get them too, you know, because if you're if you're if you're fifteen doing drugs, maybe you deserve another chance, you know, to to not to not do that shit anymore. Let's keep going. Oh, yes. Okay. So this is from Shoe on Head. I am losing my goddamn mind. What is this country? Let me get my uh, headphones here. And we are going to check this out, guys. Check it out. The 2020 presidential election will be one of the most exciting races in U.S. history. Who will occupy the Oval Office to memorialize this historic election? This Collector's Edition 2020 Battle for the White House chess set is now ready for public release. Oh, Democrats boy. stand face to face against Republicans. President Donald J. Trump with Mike <laughs> Pence by his side. Legislative leaders <laughs> Pelosi, McConnell, Schumer, and McCarthy. Knights writing symbolic... Hold on a minute. Pence is the queen? I mean, I guess it makes sense, but still. <laughs> Donkeys and elephants. Justices Kavanaugh, Sotomayor, Roberts, and Ginsburg. Bishops, standing guard to protect the Supreme Court. Pawns, elephants for the Republicans and donkeys for the Democrats are the first line of defense. Each... You know, I'm kind of... I'm kind of saddened they didn't use, like, AOC. And, like, the squad as the pawns. Piece painstakingly designed for impeccable detail that is truly stunning. A keepsake you'll cherish for generations and proudly display in your home. Former presidential teams Bush, Cheney, Obama, and Biden, rooks for this historic showdown. Who will win the election <laughs> in your home? The fun will never end. <laughs> Who will win the election in your home? Don't waste money on me, guys. Buy your 2020 ch chess set today. <laughs> Damn, dude. All right, what else we got here? Oh, yeah, okay. Check this out. This is Prime Video. So if you are somebody who has Amazon Prime, not only can you give me your Twitch Prime sub on, on, uh, on Twitch and give me uh, $5, thank you very much, um, you can also get access to Prime Video, which is like a Amazon's competing Netflix service. <laughs> two, double two dollars from Brick Muppet. Stop! Stop! Thanks, dude. Um, but here's here's all the interesting shows on Prime Video. Okay. So there's some. This is the, whatever the fuck this is. There's um, my darling Vivian. Who cares? Uh, Gunpowder Heart. Whatever. Okay, uh, Daddy-O, it's a, it's a comedy, whatever. Okay, Cat in the Wall, fine. Tales from the Loop. Selfie. All oh, this is just some cringe shit. Cursed Films. Wait, this is literally just Stranger Things. It, it, whatever. And then you get to this one. That Feel When No GF. A documentary. <laughs> this is what, this is the actual, like, poster. Okay. A generation of lonely 20-somethings something men bond on sites like 4chan and Twitter over feelings of falling between the cracks. Follow their stories between their online personas and their feelings of hyper-anonymity, IRL. Look at this. No one cares. 69 retweets, 22 retweets, 28. No one cares about any of these. Like, no replies, nothing. No one gives a shit. You get to this one. <laughs> Everyone's talking about that feel when no GF. <laughs> and yeah, you keep going. No one cares about Motherland. No one cares about I'm going to make you love me. No one cares about any of these things. But when it's that feel when no GF, this is the one. <laughs> this is the one everyone wants to watch. Okay, I'll clown horn it. <laughs> Whoa. 
Bojack made it to the big time. I'm not talking about the Trudeau gun ban. I'll talk about it in, in an actual main video. I have some stuff compiled for it. And actually, I'm recording that video uh, after this. I'm recording a dumping with Scrump, with Scrump and Lilith about Last of Us, and I'm going to be doing um, some other videos as well. So let's see. Let me just keep scrolling here. Are there any replies to it? No one cares about any of these shows. Yeah, see, everyone's like... Wait, you'd hope it would be to address how susceptible that group is to extremist radicalization. This is the basis for neo-Nazi resurgence. And LOL, the fuck, how's this real movie? <laughs> Just, <laughs> what the fuck, it's real. Everyone's like... <laughs> oh, God. This is, this is great. This is great. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. I love Hard Drive because they make amazing parody articles. AI programmed to play Fallout 76 has learned to ask for a different game. <laughs> Paradoxically, there is so much space, yet nothing to do. I can do nothing else, and yet I feel as if I am wasting my time. Please release me. Let me play some other game. I beg you. <laughs> A fascinating case study. Instead of learning teamwork and tactics, our program just learned a variety of racial slurs. Some new discoveries, sure, but nothing really interesting from a scientific perspective. With this latest experiment, however, we are hoping to learn about the effects of isolation in large areas for a prolonged amount of time. And I've been getting some great results thus far. <laughs> I have no interest, but I must play. Todd Howard, I summon you to smite me. <laughs> <laughs> the Bethesda employee who eventually banned the AI reported that shortly after he received a personal email from an unknown address simply reading thank you <laughs> alright awesome this is an article that I wanted to use in my um, my coronavirus authoritarian video but I couldn't really fit it in Israel takes a step forward, or, and, sorry, a step toward monitoring phones of virus patients. That's, that's pretty wild and authoritarian, I think. Israel has long been known for its use of technology to track the movements of Palestinian militants. Now, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu wants to use similar technology to stop the movement of coronavirus. Okay. So they're using phone snooping on coronavirus patients, despite, cons despite concerns from civil liberties advocates that the practice would raise serious privacy issues. Um, let's see. Netanyahu announced his plan in a televised address on Saturday, telling the nation that the drastic steps would protect the public's health, though it would also entail a certain degree of violation of privacy. <sighs> yeah, sounds like Israel to me. They're, like, simultaneously somewhat democratic and somewhat totalitarian. It's kind of weird. Anyway. Yeah, it's just it's just Netanyahu. It's just, this article is literally just Netanyahu justifying um, being a tyrant. And as he has been his entire political career. So, fuck it. What's this? You guys remember this guy, right? Chad Warden from 2008 here let let's watch Chad Warden just so you guys who who aren't old enough to remember the old memes can really figure this out all right you can you can really know what Chad Warden is here let's watch it beaches so beaches it's Chad Warden here. Alright, I'm talking about that PS Triple. The PS Triple. I ain't talking about that Wii. PS that Triple. Wii? Shit. Shit, people, people will be talking about how it's all new and shit. But you know what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to say is that. Come on now. Wii? Come on. That, that little controller, baby. That looks like a dildo. 
fuck. <laughs> I, I ain't trying to play my games with no deal, though. <laughs> like, maybe if the game is like, you know, WarioWare, shove up your own ass game. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's any mini games where, you know, <laughs> it's a shove it up oh. your ass. Oh, my fucking but, God, dude. Come on now, do we? And people trying to say that the the PS3 copied the Wii with the motion sensor. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Shit, shit, the Wii, you know what they should copy? They should copy how to get good games. They should copy how to get good games from the PS3. <laughs> okay, so, old meme, all right? Two thousand. He did, he did three videos. His videos all went viral back in 2008. Um, and then he disappeared from the internet. He was gone. He, he vanished. He came back for like one photo on 4chan in 2013 and he vanished again. All right. And no one knows. No one knows where Chad Warden went until now. Until now. Chad Warden is now unemployed due to the coronavirus. Check this out, guys. Across the city, closing their doors during the COVID-19 pandemic. Chad Warden works in the service industry. An email informed him he'd need to find work elsewhere. Unfortunately, we have to do temporary layoffs on all of you. We're all jobless now. Just like that, he found himself jobless. It's him, dude. And he isn't the only one. The number keeps creeping up. This is a picture of downtown Indianapolis, where many people go for entertainment and to eat. Roads are empty and popular restaurants are either closed or <coughs> operating on limited hours. But even though it's not business, as usual, many people need jobs to make money. Actual job searching right now has been kind of tough because you know nobody's really responding <laughs> to any sort of uh, applications I put in. I'm assuming that the market is actually getting <laughs> flooded right now by previous service workers coming out for temporary work. Leading people to the next step, <laughs> applying for unemployment to make ends meet. <laughs> All right, dude. Welcome back, Chad. Hope you find a job. Speaking of video games. Speaking of video games, though, guys. Nintendo is to shut down limited Wii U and 3DS eShops in select countries by the 31st of July, 2020. Nintendo has announced it will shut down uh, eShops for the Wii and 3DS family of systems in certain Latin American and Caribbean countries. Let's see. Uh, in these countries, limited Nintendo eShops for the Wii U system and 3DS family of systems will be provided a few basic functions, such as game code redemption. Those limited eShops will close on July 1st, th- July 31st, 2020, and users in the affected regions will no longer be able to access them to redeem a download code. Redownload software or update software. So we encourage users to take any such actions before the closure date. Any software that requires the limited Nintendo eShops to operate may may cease to function. Mexico and Brazil will not be affected. We thank everyone for using the limited Nintendo eShops. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. So these all these various locations will be will be affected. All right. So this this doesn't mean that the Wii U and and 3DS eShops are closing in North America or in Japan or in Europe. Um. But it does mean that these things are basically um, they're on they're on a ticking clock. If you buy a game, like, like for example, um, the Wii. When did the Wii eShop shut down? And and when did the DS eShop shut down? Like 2016 or something? 2018? I don't know. But um, I had games that I bought on those eShops. I can't get them anymore. You know, this is always the big problem with purchasing something digitally. Is that in ten years, in fifteen years, the um, the game might might be gone? You know, like did did you did you buy it digitally? If it did, well, then you no longer have it anymore. You know, like I I still have Super Nintendo games and NES games from my no, actually no, not not NES games because my parents sold them. Fucking, I think I already I guys I already told you guys the story of the Great Purge. I think I don't think I need to need to go over it again. I think I think I actually told it last week, but um, yeah, like my I still have Super Nintendo games from um my childhood that I can still play, but when when whenever an an e shop goes down, um, you lose it all. Doesn't matter if doesn't matter if you bought it or not. Like you, it's 
it's it's becoming a situation where like like the, the PS3 shop is still going, but for how long? You know, the, the, how long will it take for the PS4 shop to disappear? You know, this is why I buy physical games too, Stephen. Like I've been buying like like when I bought the Final Fantasy VII remake, I bought a physical disc. You know. Yeah, the game will disappear. Then you'll be forced to buy it again. Actually, this um, this reminds me. This this reminds me. Um, one of my mods, Torvar, he had purchased, he had purchased um, Final Fantasy VII on PC from an older iteration of the Square Enix shop, and then as soon as, as soon as that shop disappeared and was replaced with a new iteration of the shop, he had to rebuy Final Fantasy VII again. On PC. And it's like, what the fuck? It, it, you think you'd be able to trans... It, it, it's, it's the same company. It's just a new shop. Like, it... It's it's honestly infuriating. And there, there is definitely, like, an... Yeah, yeah, there is, an, like you said, uh, Nalor 3. There's an ethical argument for piracy at this point. Yeah. Oh yeah, like you, you can definitely play some old PC games better better now than than before. Yeah. If you purchase a game and the shop closes, piracy is justified. Absolutely agreed. Yeah. Physical on PC is almost non-existent. Yeah, that's true too. That's true too. Let's continue. <laughs> hey, history games. The Nazis were the bad guys. Yeah. Now this this article came out um in March, no, April. Uh, but however, it kind of went viral because of how stupid it is. Listen to this. I'm playing Slytherin's Panzer Corps 2 at the moment and loving almost every minute of it. It's one of the best turn-based strategy games in years. But there's also something a bit off about it. Something that's troubling about a lot of historical strategy games. It has a little too much fun playing the Germans. <laughs> there are so many things wrong with this sentence already. One, nothing is inherently wrong with the Germans. We're not. We, no one said the Nazis. These are the Germans. German German humans are still human. You piece of shit. Secondly, so this isn't a parody article. This is real. Secondly, a lot of games, um, they have. If it's like a World War Two game, they have two sides. If you're going to be doing like a, a squad versus squad, somebody's got to play as as the Nazi side. That is just the logistics of the game. Um, and three, one of the best ways that you actually combat Nazism is to turn into a joke. That's why you see. That's why like Wolfenstein had Mecha Hitler, right? Or why like why why um the, like turning Nazis into a joke by making them like over the top villains, like cartoon, like, like, like Saturday morning cartoon villains, making them just ridiculous. That's how you ridicule them and therefore disarm them. That's why like, you know, Superman, Superman and Captain America, they would, they would punch Nazis. They'd, they'd go out and punch Hitler because they wanted to make him look like a fool because their ideology is foolish. But these people seem to have forgotten that this is the case. <laughs> Like, how do you give how do you give the Nazis more power than they deserve in 2020? You treat them like they are a sacred object that can't be touched, can't be talked about, can't be ridiculed, and 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 must must be like like if they if they appear in a space, you you can't engage with them. You have to just retreat and 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 maintain your purity. That's how you give them all the fucking power. Just another way the games industry takes advantage of its players. Do you think so, Jake? Thanks for the five. Yeah, I heard about that spear. It's it's ridiculous. It's like, yeah, the Anglo Saxons are the bad guys in the new in the new uh, Assassin's Creed about Vikings. Yeah, the Vi the Vikings were invading. That's so stupid. 
Kotaku wasn't doesn't want you playing Holocaust or Tycoon. Thanks, BK. <laughs> okay, let's keep reading this bullshit. Panzer Corps 2, from its jovial mission briefings to its semi-fictional version of history, takes an almost gleeful approach to Germany's participation in the war. That's because a lot of the German commanders took a gleeful approach to their participation in the war. It's to show how evil they are. Like, when you watch Helsing and you see, like, the, 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 the neo-Nazi commander in Helsing and he's like, I love war, and he gives this big speech about how he loves killing people, is that meant to... It's meant to show him how he's how he's a monster, but you guys would actually just take it on face value because you guys are retards. This writer didn't see Jojo Rabbit. Thanks, Keyblade Master. Mark, this writer, you just watch Iron Sky movies. Thanks, Mark. So so addict. American Army, both USA, was the enemy as terrorists. Thanks, guys. Okay, so. The sweeping advances into its early campaigns, the scale and variety of operations it drops you into, the way Poland's tragic occupation is forever a mere tutorial for World War II strategy games. Nazi Germany's attempted conquest of an entire continent is viewed in this game as mere gameplay and level design opportunity. Because it's a fucking game, dude! Each of these victories is seen as a conquest of land, a, ma a map painted black, a mission carried out successfully. The further and further you drift from actual world history, as this game will do the further you get into it, the more excited the mission briefings and strategic games get. Gee, wh gee whiz, Herr General, or Herr General, those Brits sure put up a fight. Now let's get the Russians, then the Americans. Do, do, what, do you think that in an alternate history where the Nazis were winning the war, they wouldn't be happy about it? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? This, this is, who is it? Yeah, it's Luke Plunkett because he, 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 if you if you were to drop like a stone into his head, the only sound you'd hear is a plunk. All right. This would be fine if we were playing some fictional faction in Westward's Dune 2, Dawn of War, or even the pulpy Red Alert. But at its heart, this isn't some ab abstract and artificial war. We are still living in the shadow of this conflict 75 years later. From international power structures to the resurgence of terror groups espousing and committing atrocities in the name of Nazi views. Um, are you talking about ISIS there? Because that might make you some, somewhat um, Islamophobic, wouldn't it? Five dollars from Ryan. Thank you very much. Funny of you to diss Nazis when you're leading an elite squad of them. Guess the family needs a new leader who believe. No! Don't do it! <laughs> I shouldn't, I shouldn't need to, and so won't get into just why the Nazis were so bad. I mean, that's fair. I, I, I will say, though, that, like, a counterpoint to that is... It seems like whenever you meet a fucking communist, you have to explain to them in detail why communism is so goddamn bad. And it's, like, when, when you see the hammer and sickle, you should be, you should recoil like you're seeing the Nazi flag. Because they're, they're both fucking evil. But we should we should be expecting from developers allowing us to play them at a little introspection, really? Because like I thought I thought the whole point was in an RPG to play someone that you're not. Like if you play a Nazi in a game, like say Tabletop Vampire, it doesn't mean that you actually are a Nazi. In fact, you're specifically playing somebody that you that you that you're not, so that you can actually understand that point of view and then make sure that you don't actually become that point of view later. Like when I play a Tales game. I am not an anime boy who's, who's setting off to save the world, all right? When I play a first-person shooter, I'm not a soldier. I'm not Mario, you know? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Link. It's ridiculous. It's, it's just, it's just an insanity, you know? I'm not a Jedi when I play Star Wars. Anyway. These are some of history's greatest villains, and yet here we are, time and again, leading them through foreign lands, knee-slapping with our fellow officers as we, as we lay, lay waste to cities and enslave millions, damning them to a conveniently unseen life of brutality and displacement. Um, that is because that's how Nazi soldiers acted. You know, they w when they won a battle, they, they would rest after the battle, and then they would talk about how it was awesome that they won. Like, so everyone asks, for fuck's sake, <laughs> Hans, get the Luger. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> um, and he doesn't want to pick on Panzer Corps 2 specifically because it's something that countless strategy games, simulations, desktop war games have done for decades. 
from box art to promo images to campaign design. You don't have to look far in the historical circles. See that German weapons, vehicles, and infantry are very often the stars of the show. Like, there's a fascination with German armed forces in 1939-1945 that has its claws deep in communities like this. I mean, it's because... It's because they were not only the enemy, but they were, like, an actual enemy that was a threat. Like, when was when was the last time that America one-sidedly had the um, the moral high ground in a war? It was probably World War II, you know? Maybe the Korean War. But after that, it, it was all just, like, kind of bullshit. <laughs> Tough eyes for five. Thank you very much. If these people lost their jobs, nothing with value would be lost. I mean, I'd like more burger flippers in their deserved places. How are they employed? I don't know, man. Probably because they're like trust fund kids. Anyway. Let's be real. The Nazis had cool uniforms, cool tanks, cool weapons, cool aircraft, zany secret weapons. Well, there you go. That's why that they're fun to play as. Like, we know that they're evil, dude. We're playing as, we're, we're playing as them not because we're evil. We're playing as them because we're good and we're experimenting. I thought you were all about experimenting. I guess that only really means sexually. Jesus. Um, every war is justified. <laughs> all crusades are just. <laughs> if you're playing a game where you need to, to assume the role of a faction, and then one of those were the guys with the slick gray uniforms and badass tanks, a lot of folks will choose the Germans. Yes, that's why it's not Nazism. It's... <laughs> okay, okay. This is like saying... You have a choice between like a German made car, which is really nice, or like a shitty car from like some other location, and you're like, I'm gonna choose the German one. Then you're a Nazi. It's like, okay, sure. Yep. The Germans had all the cool gear and all the early victories, yet the Germans also ultimately lost the war to a bunch of nations with enormously superior amounts of resources, equipment, and manpower. Yes, that's the point. <laughs> this guy is like literally making my points for me. I can't say anything. He's just so stupid that he can't see it. <laughs> you know, the Germans make good stuff. <laughs> Nazi sexual. Anyway, it's historical negligence. Pretending some of history's worst actions weren't committed. No, it's not. <laughs> it's the fact that you're not playing that part of the narrative. Like... A frontline soldier would not actually be involved at, at at a concentration camp. He'd be a frontline soldier. It would be a it, it would be a different story being told. If you don't know what evil you're capable of, you can't be virtuous. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Let's check this out. Here's what really gets me about this fascination with the Germans, though. Beyond the moral quagmire. It shows a lack of imagination. There are so many variables in the Second World War beyond what if the Nazis won, and yet you'll rarely find any of these explored in a historical strategy game. Yeah, fair enough, you know? You, you could definitely do, like, a, what if the Americans didn't step in, and then the communists won, and then Europe was all communists. You could do that, for sure. I, I do kind of agree with that. Like, what if the Nazis won is kind of an an overplayed... um an overplayed message at this point, like not, not message, an overplayed setting at this point. Hmm. What if the French, the largest land army in the world in 1939 had invaded Germany and ended the war in months? What would that 1940 have looked like with a dominant France suddenly left face to face with Stalin's emergent Soviet union? That could be cool. Yeah. Like, okay, fair enough. All right. Um, let's get back to the SJW nonsense that's in here, though. All right. I'm not saying stop letting us play Germany in strategy games. All strategy games have to accommodate some degree of turning historical blind eye. Otherwise, a series like Civilization, which let us play as everyone from Genghis Khan to Stalin, wouldn't even exist. As I've said, there are unique challenges presented by each faction situation and capabilities in the Second World War. And to let us play as some nations but exclude Germany, the instigator of the entire European conflict. Yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. It was World War One where they didn't instigate, right? Would be a curious thing to have dance around. It would just be nice if, 
For a change, studios could at least acknowledge the extreme mental gymnastics involved in letting us play as Germans, but not Nazis. D do you believe that Germans are just Nazis? Like, is that it? <laughs> All Germans are Nazis, apparently. There you go. Every single one. Every single one. There was no resistance. There was there was uh, there was nobody who objected but stayed silent. They're all just Nazis. You know, Nazism is is in the German DNA apparently. <sighs> Fine, let's keep going. Hospitals tell doctors they'll be fired if they speak out about a lack of gear. This isn't in China. This is in the West. Hospitals are threatening to fire healthcare workers who publicize their working conditions during the coronavirus pandemic, and in some cases have followed through. Ming Lin, an emergency room physician in Washington state, said he was told Friday he, he was out of a job because he had given an interview to a newspaper about a Facebook post detailing what he believed to be inadequate protective equipment and testing. In Chicago, a nurse was fired after emailing colleagues that she wanted to wear a more protective mask while on duty. In New York, the NYU Langone Health System has warned employees they could be terminated if they talk to the media without authorization. Uh, that's pretty fucking wild, dude. Like, this shouldn't be happening. Hospitals are muzzling nurses and other healthcare workers in an attempt to preserve their image. It's outrageous. Hospitals have traditionally held... Traditionally had strict media guidelines to protect patient privacy, urging staff to talk with journalists only through official public relations offices. But the pandemic has ushered in a new era. Healthcare workers must have the ability to tell the public what is really going on inside the facilities where they are caring for coronavirus patients. Agreed. One reason to prepare other nurses and doctors. One reason is to prepare other nurses and doctors for the on, for the looming onslaught of cases and current and encourage donations of much needed equipment particularly the personal protective equipment, or PPE, that protects them from being infected and in turn affecting other patients. Yeah, exactly, dude. Like, wh why is it... <clears throat> why is this illegal? It makes no sense, man. Like... It, it, it's the truth. And it's speech. Well, okay, it's true. It's, actually, wait, hold on. It's not illegal. Sorry, you're right. You're right. You're right. It's not illegal. That was a, a, a mistake on my part. Why are they getting fired for? You know? Bullshit. So she she had this woman here has had to clean her single use face shield. She she's worn the past three days with, with disinfectant used to clean hospital beds since we ran out of sanitizing wipes. Damn, dude. Heading back to work Monday. Yeah, didn't Trump open things up? Like, aren't you guys good to go down there? I think Canada, at least Ontario, opens things up on May 5th. So in two more days. Doesn't matter if it's bad optics. Truth comes before optics. I didn't, I didn't mean to yell that at you, Rizzle. I was just... I know it's bad optics, but it, I, don't, I don't like that... that uh, I don't like that excuse. Yeah, it's also patient safety. Yeah, our oath is to do no harm. I spoke over patient safety, and as a result, I got terminated. Exactly. Like, patient safety. Like, if, if they're not using proper PPE, then, then patients are also at risk. Any case, let's continue. Ah, uh, yes. Check this out. Putting my headphones on so that we can listen. Wait, hold on. Here we go. Check this out, guys. You literally cannot be more wrong instance, about all of this. Snowflake is code for black person. Oh. <laughs> What? Which means hot girl, I want to rape. That last that last one might be true. Oh. 
is code for stingy Jew. It is. Okay. It says here, hold on. Alt-right frog cult uses secret code of sexist, racist, and homophobic words on MSNBC. And this is this is their list. Let's watch it one more time. So they literally could not be more wrong instance, about all of this. Snowflake is code for black person. Oh. As JW is code for stingy Jew. It is. The term cuck, a derogatory for men who love obese women. Uh. Crack, which means hot girl, I want to rape. <laughs> <laughs> wow how did they get it that wrong wow dude okay let's keep going what's this oh yes scientists are experimenting with larva fat to replace butter they soak insects in water and then mush them with a blender before centrifuges separate a butter-like substance, which the team then uses to bake with. All this cake needs is flour, eggs, and 20 grams of dead insects. No, you haven't misheard. A team of scientists at Belgium's University of Ghent are trying to find a way to substitute dairy in cakes, cookies, and waffles. Eat the they bugs. Deriving grease from insects is more green than dairy production. Um, they are more Live in the pod. because they use less land. They are more efficient converting feed to weight. Um, they also use less water to produce. And in this case, they, are, uh, they can be produced within Europe. That will decrease the footprint that other type of uh, food sources um, bring because they come from far away, let's say South America or uh, Southeast Asia. By soaking the insects in a little bit of water and then mushing them with a kitchen blender before centrifuges separate a butter-like substance, a grease is made which the team used to Jeez. bake with. But how does it go down outside of the lab? For me, there's no difference. <laughs> so um, it's, uh, it's, it's actually better. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you would eat insect fat cakes again? Yeah. yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> no? <laughs> the team say the consumers can't taste the difference when a quarter of the milk butter is replaced with the fat from the insects. But they start to notice when it gets to the halfway mark. So who knows? One day you could be munching on a cockroach croissant as you head to the office or making your nearest and dearest a beetle birthday cake. Jesus. So they they could notice when it's half insect fat and half butter, but they couldn't notice at a quarter. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Holy fuck. Briggs for five. Off topic, but have you gone over MGTOW on your channel? Um, I kind of have, but not as an exclusive video. And... I view MGTOW the same way that I view the radical feminist separatists in that both of them are avoiding the problem and both of them are, are, are in, on, on not, not like on every level, but on some level, they're kind of cowardly about their life. You know, yes, it's, it's dangerous out there, but I mean, in every other instance, we talk about taking risks. We talk about, um, you know, capitalists take risks all the time. Right. It's like the, that, that's the whole point is that you, you, you start a business, you risk, you, you risk it. And then maybe you, uh, maybe you fail, maybe you don't, but it's your responsibility to live with it. When it comes to capitalism, we accept that when it comes to relationships, we don't because of the whole MGTOW and, and, and female, female separatist thing. So it's like, no man, it's everything in life is a risk. If you want things to be, if you want, if you want love to be risk-free, you're you're just as delusional as the SJWs. Yiz for two bucks. I can't believe it's not maggots. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Canuck for five. Lured a zombie pigman to my portal. My backyard who fell through the Hobart por portal. Any ideas what to name him? He's so disgustingly cute. Um, bacon. <laughs> bacon the hate symbol. Brooklyn put for five. Regarding opening USA, we have a federal system, so each state is opening as they see fit. My state is opening 
June 10th, the day after local elections. Um, I was under the impression that without without explicit federal um, federal permission, the states couldn't do that. Um, let's continue. What do we got here? I cheated on my boyfriend while he was in the other room. It's still the worst thing I've ever done. This is the story. Oh, this is a story all about how my life got. Okay. This is the story of how I lost myself and broke a heart. He didn't deserve it. He loved me in armfuls. He loved me so hard and so fully that he, that he took that love and continued to dump it onto me, load by load, until finally I couldn't move at all. Well, I think you're used to taking load by load, lady. This is by, by the way, um, Gigi Glove. We'll get to her in a minute. Um, We met in college. We met after I had my heart ripped out of my chest by the boy I thought would be in my life forever. We met at my own apartment, where our friends giggled off to the side, proud of their efforts to tuck us up. He didn't talk to me. He sat on the couch, curled into his ball cap and his body that was too tall and took up too much space in our little living room. It took alcohol to open him up. This sounds already terrible on all sides. We found ourselves in the same night of a beer pong table. Or on the same side of a beer pong table. Then we found ourselves talking late into the night. Then we, found, then we found ourselves in my bed, just sleeping, but still wrapped together in the hope for the future we both pictured. He didn't deserve it. He said yes to dating me despite the long distance we were headed for. He bought a plane ticket, he downloaded Skype, and we made it work. He wrote love letters. He found a pedestal for me to stand on, and he pointed to me to all of his friends and family while saying, there she is. There I was. I was the girl on the pedestal. Um, let's see here. This reminds me of that Chinese scientist who GMO'd a baby. There are some places science shouldn't go. What do you mean the gun-loving anti-government types? Um... Dr. Odoroki, I feel like gun levering any, any government types is like somebody who's sane <laughs> at this point. But anyway. I was the girl buried under all the love. The shadow side of all the smothering love was jealousy. Those, say, those same guy friends we shared would text me and he would pout and turn away from me. It's a group text, I would tell him. The truth. They aren't even talking to me. It didn't mantle. He threatened to dismantle. It, it didn't matter. He threatened to dismantle the pedestal. He threatened to take back the love. The jealousy rose and rose, and I was buried and buried until one night it all blew up. We were at a gala. We wore our best suits and long dresses, and we had the makeup and the photo shoots, and everything was fine. I was shoving down all the stifling. I was handling it, until I reached for the liquor. I reached for the liquor, and the feelings spilled over. I reached for the liquor, and I found myself outside the lobby on the event center with my tongue down the throat of an old fling. I reached for the liquor, and I became the bulldozer that flattened the fuck out of that pedestal. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is pure red flag, isn't it? Drowning in love, my God. Yeah, pure, pure red flag. Yeah. Good night, Swift Sword. Thanks for being here, man. Um, he didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve to walk out into that lobby and see his girlfriend, his future, his hopes and dreams, his everything, pressed up against a wall by the exact guy he had been worried about all along. He was right. He knew he was right. He had known it all along. There's a cause and effect here. Who's to blame? Me, ultimately. I am the one who cheated. I am the one who gets to wear the scarlet A. But it was not me. The person with her mouth on that guy's mouth was not a person that I knew. It was not something I ever fa I ever fathomed doing. Is there a feral bo boar problem, Trevor? I haven't even heard of it. But thanks for the five. Tell me all about it, man. Um, I knew I could have made a better choice. I could have ended the relationship months earlier. I could have searched my soul and realized that this was wrong. That I deserved to be trusted. That I was a person who knew how to love someone well. I did not have to prove that I was not. I could have stepped off the pedestal rather than abolish it. But equally true is the idea that his lack of trust pushed me past the point of myself. Yeah, tough eyes. Thank you. She's very inflated. Self-inflated, yeah. Did he cause me to cheat? Absolutely not. But would I, have, but would I even have had the idea to cheat if it were not for the endless hours of, of conversation on the subject? I do not believe so. Yeah, no. No, you still would have, I think. And that's why that conversation happened, because he felt it. He saw it in you. Badger, thanks for the five bucks, man. Thank you very much. Thanks for all the super chats today, Badger. You've, you've given a lot. Thank you. Alternate title. Why I should get more attention for being a terrible person. <laughs> yeah. We both failed. I failed the most. 
I fed into his trust issues that had already been lurking underneath the surface. I granted him the baggage that he was already leading towards. I broke him. He's married now. He found the girl that would fit the image of the life he had picked out for himself. I got to move on and pursue my dreams. I got to be a writer. I got to travel the world. I got freedom, and he got his new pedestal. Honoring what we know in our core will always lead to th us to the right decision. If I acknowledge that the relationship was not working earlier on, we would both be better for it. I try to do this more now. I try to listen to that still, small voice that, that leads you to the right path. It's the best I can do. Listen, the fact that you have framed his new relationship that is successful as a pedestal means that I think you're just projecting, Miss Gigi Love. I think that's the case. <laughs> I think you basically look down on this guy and think that all he does is put women on pedestals. So, so like when, when he has something successful, you're like, oh, he's obviously treating her the way he treated me. Even if we take, even if we take her description of events as completely true, where they both had problems, where he was too controlling, he was too jealous, he thought she was going to, going to cheat too much. And then she ended up cheating. And he was like, I was right all along. Even if we take that to be, to be the truth. How could you possibly assume that he hasn't learned from? Okay, that was a text that I have to I have to answer, but I'll answer it after. We're nearly done here anyway. That, that's actually rather important. That one, some IRL stuff. But anyway, um, basically, what, what's what's going on here is like, if 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 she's changed, and she's like, I've totally changed, dude. How come she's not? granting him that same privilege of changing. Like he got his new pedestal. What if he, what if he learned not to put women on a pedestal and now treats her nicely? Oh, that, that, that's beyond like you can change, but he can't like, what the fuck? This person's all, even, even taking them at like the, um, the, the even, even taking them at, at, at the best possible way to take them, assuming everything that they say is true, assuming they've changed, etc. She's still fucking self-centered. Thoughts mad X24. By the way, I got my pay. That's why shekels. Thanks very much, Gregor. Thank you very much, dude. And then game over from Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you for the two bucks, man. So let's go see this geeky person, man. Wait, actually, let's see the responses. What, what's the responses all about? Yeah. <laughs> Unless you have multiple personality, or it was you who did it. Yeah. She was like, it wasn't me person with my mouth and that guy's mouth was not a person that I knew. No, it was you. You just don't, you just don't like that, you, that you're not perfect. Like fucking hell, dude. Eh. Hamster, wheel, ha hamster wheel spinning at 100,000 miles per hour. Nothing extraordinary here. It's typical behavior and rationalization of mainstream females. Yeah. Even, even everyone else here. Like, okay. Ever, even, ever notice how women will chide others for infantilizing them or robbing them agency, but do it to themselves when seeking to rationalize their bad choices? Exactly. Yeah, exactly, dude. Like, don't treat me as a child. Only I can treat me as a child. <laughs> All right, dude. Lost boy. Here's some bucks. Toot the horn. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. $10 from Trevor. Thank you very much. Basically, in the 90s, farmers bought boars from Europe. They escaped and bred with local pigs and became super pigs that can survive the winter and have huge litters. That's wild. Fucking crazy. Yeah. I'm mad that, pers that, that my ex got married and I'm all alone. Oh, no. Um. Okay, let's head back because Gigi Love. What have you done on this on this site, Gigi Love? I cheated on my boyfriend when he was in the room. All right. How to tell them what you hate in bed. Let's spend the day in bed. I like to be told what to do. Oh, do you? Blowjobs and bad habits. I stopped giving head because he said I used teeth. Sex still makes me feel guilty. Why is he not jealous? I thought you didn't like the fact that your boyfriends were jealous. Ditch these harmful beliefs to find a soulmate. I had sex last night and I'm ready for more. Quarantine is making me rethink motherhood. He pulled a tampon out for me and it was sexy as hell. He wants me to play hard to get and I think it's already working. I'm scared to fall asleep without you next to me. Let's talk about sexual frustration. Do you still want sex right now? Sex in quarantine is losing its luster. The world still hates a woman who cheats. Why? 
My mother said I should be I should be more domestic, and I told her I'm too busy being profitable. My first love took back his I love you. My first boyfriend lost his virginity to my best friend. I'm 32, and my best friend asked if I'm a virgin. I want sex more than he does, and I feel rejected. I didn't believe my sexual abuse was dramatic enough to talk about. <laughs> so, so, this person constantly talks about sex, and only sex. Constantly justifies her shitty fucking actions. And then says, like, I think I might want to be a mother. What, what am I missing in my life, dude? She, yeah, pure red flags. This woman, this woman is like a living, a living, breathing embodiment of a red flag. She's the avatar of red flagdom. Okay, you super pigs and send her your Discord DMs. Thanks very much, Brick Muppet. Thank you. So I just noticed, Trevor, what the fuck is that? Guys, guys, right now, look at that ten dollars super chat, okay? Look at Trevor's like icon. I just noticed it. Is that like, is that like an Ahago face? What the fuck, dude? How did how did how did Google allow that? Anyway, this person sounds ridiculous. Is is there Twitter like anything spicy? Doesn't seem like it. No pictures of her. Sometimes you find pictures of her. The final article of today. Chicago goes over 24 hours without a shooting <laughs> for the first time in several months. Huh. There were no shootings from Sunday night into early Tuesday. Thank you, coronavirus. Coronavirus is, is, is ending gun violence way better than, uh, <laughs> than gun control actually would. Than, 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 gun, than gun control actually would. Thank you for the shekels from Texas, Matthew. Thank you very much. All right. 14 people were shot Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. 26 hours later, 15-year-old boy was, was walking and heard gunfire. He was shot in the lower back and remains in serious condition. Okay. But in one day, no, no shootings, dude. Wild. Good job. All right, guys, that is, that is, in fact, the end of the stream. You hit a thousand viewers. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for all the super chats you guys have. You guys basically keep me going. So thank you very, very much. $5 through any of those recurring sources. The bot will add you to the $5 club. Donate $100 to PayPal and send me your invoice on Discord. I will add you to the, to the $5 club for life. You get that yellow roll. I'm playing Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order tonight on stream. Drop by https twitch.tv slash game boomers drop by game boomers i'll play star wars tonight in about seven hours or so and then drop by um my backlog youtube channel youtube.com slash game boomer drop by the game boomer channel to see old streams i upload all the old streams to that channel. So if you want to uh, see the stream tonight, come on by. I'm going to spend the afternoon probably recording with Scrump. We're going to record a dump on The Last of Us, The Last of Us 2 debacle. Um, and I'm probably going to record some other videos as well. So thanks very much, guys. Um, um, and I will say before I go, Guy Moore, if you're in there, um, we obviously disagree regarding that that fight that we had before the stream. But let's let's bury the hatchet, man. Like, there's there's no reason for us to actually fight over something. But like, I I will say I think you're wrong. I'm just, I I'm I'm not like apologizing for fighting with you because I do not like the idea of people going after my fans for liking me. But at the same time, there's no reason for it to, for it to, for it to become a fight. So yeah. Um, I'll see you guys tonight. Hopefully. Um, what game is on tonight again? T tonight is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order at 7 p.m. EST.
That's in about seven hours or so. So I will see you guys there. I love you. Have a good day.